cherry, not Krispy Kreme, but maybe ice cream. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I hear it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my, my antenna was too high. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hallelujah. Sunday we started to look at independence from the kingdom of darkness, independence from the kingdom of the Lord. And working in that operation. Uh, tonight, I want to take a look at who you have around you mm. as part of kingdom of God operation. Living in the realm, who's around you? That's a mouthful for a title, but anyway. KOG, kingdom of God operation. Living in capital T H E R E A L. Realm, living in the realm. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you have around you? You need to move. You need to move right now. Wow. Anyway. Traveling from one to I another. I know it is. <laughs> Praise God. Who do you have around you? Well, listen. We're going to we'll open up and look at the daddy's perspective. Now. Daddy's perspective is alone is not good. Alone is not good. That's daddy's perspective. And we go all the way to the beginning of the book, books, to find that. So let's jump over to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, and we're going to start looking at verse 18. Genesis 2, 18. And while you're turning there, I'm going to set up a little background. 126, the Lord says, Let us make man in our image and likeness. That's mankind, not the male man, male kind, humankind. And over in 215, the Lord God took the man and placed him in the garden of Eden to work it and watch over it. Now notice, he placed the man in the garden and gave the male man a function. That is paramount, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not taking anything from, away from the woman here, but the male man of the human kind was given a specific task. And part of that task is work. Yes. They were to be functional. They were to be moving, working, tending to the garden, protecting it. Okay? If that is absent in your life, there's going to be a problem. Now, granted, we work, we get to an age where we can stop working and retire and so on. But at 18, 19 years old, retirement should not be an option. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say this. Retirement should not be an option even if you are an heir of a multi-million or a multi-billion dollar family. Because there is work to be done. And it's not necessarily more to gain more money. It's to make sure what you have continues, continues to be invested correctly and can spread out, ideally, and benefit the world. Okay? So again, we see that our specific function that the Lord God gave to the man. Verse 16, And the Lord God commanded him, Eat from any tree, except for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat it, you'll certainly die. Brings me down to 18. And this is what we're talking about here. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. It is not good for man to be alone. Okay? Daddy put all that he power packed the first male man. And he says, it's not good for you. Okay? You got a lot in you. It needs to be shared. It needs to be partnered with. It needs to be expanded upon. And, and then we see God saying, the rest of 18, I will make a helper corresponding to him. Verse 19. 
The Lord God formed out of the ground every wild animal and every bird of the sky and brought each to the man to see what he would call it. Whatever the man called the living creature, that's what it named, that's what its name was. The names the man gave names to all the livestock, birds in the sky, every wild animal, but for the man, no helper was found corresponding to him. So everything daddy created after he put the male man in the garden, a corresponding helper was not found. Who's around you? We have a lot of intelligent wildlife, but it is not to the degree of mankind. Sometimes it literally amazes me when I watch the primates, the big apes, how they are able to communicate. The orangutan and, and, the, and the mountain gorillas and the chimpanzees, the things that they can be taught, sign language and the whole nine yards. The, <clears throat> the nurturing ability when human children come into contact with them, the care they give to small children. It's amazing. They, they, they won't hurt them. They'll gather them and nurture them and care and protect them. So even the wild animals are intelligent, but still, these were not corresponding helpers for the male man. And then we jump down to 22. God caused the man to fall asleep, took a rib, closed the flesh at that place, then the Lord God made the rib he had taken from the man into a woman and brought her to man. Now, corresponding helper. Prior to God forming, fashioning a woman from the rib, he had to spend time with the male man, we know as Adam. Caused Adam to fall asleep. Removed the rib, sealed up the flesh. Went and worked on this man with a wound, woman. And then brought her back to Adam. They had time spent together. The woman and God. The, the man and God had time spent together. Correspondingly, when they came together, they had both had God as a primary focus. You understand what I'm saying? Intimacy was built between God and the man. Intimacy was built between God and the woman. And then the union comes together. This is where when we start... <coughs> Look at the passages of scripture that talk to us about not being unequally yoked. Not just in marriage, but in a lot of things. Right. In, in, in the business world, in the ministry world, the whole nine yards. Listen, we're not, not to be unequally yoked, which is a partnership. It doesn't say anything about fellowship. Because if we remove ourselves from fellowship, how is the gospel ever going to be proclaimed to those who need it? Jesus never removed himself from fellowship, but he was very careful of who he came into partnership with. Are you with me? So again, guys, we have the male man before the woman intimacy was coming. The first female man intimacy with God. So that so they were both programmed the same way. And then they were brought together, okay? A corresponding helper, if you will. So understand, both Adam and his wife had separate relationships, separate relationships with the Lord prior to uniting as one. It's interesting, okay? So when Daddy set this thing up, he actually made a full group, Okay? He, 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 he didn't make, he didn't give himself fully to one and lack the other. No, time was spent equally. And what we need to remember is we have the Holy Spirit in us now, right? It's almost like they had the Spirit without measure back then. I mean, they were like lightning quick. You see what I'm saying? I mean, things could be downloaded. They could grasp things. I think, and I'm going to go out on them and say this, at levels that we can't right now because remember this was before the fall 
So there's a, it's a higher level of spirit. It's not that we can't attain that, but it's a higher level of spiritual uh, coming together, receiving, and transmitting. Like All right? So again, he is quite able to speed up what he wanted to download into the both of them of himself prior to bringing them into unity as one. Okay? Now, so this is the key to what I said here, guys. The key is both partners knew God before learning each other. Both partners knew God before learning each other. Like, <laughs> see, sometimes we have people, you know, they, you, you, and listen, it's okay, you're falling in love, you're attracted to someone, but you really need to have the Holy Spirit's ears. Or he needs to have your ear. Because, I mean, you, you might get with someone and be like, man, I just love them so much, I love them so much. But they're not where they need to be. And sometimes people don't want to get to where they need to be. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. They can pull you down. Well, it's okay because I'm going to save you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you ain't. No, you ain't. You ain't the Holy Spirit. No, you're not. not gonna you better work on yourself. Amen. Okay? And this is sometimes where we can run into trouble when we when we come together. In this case, marriage unequally yoked. We are have been taught learning about God and someone that doesn't. Now you get involved with that person and you bring them into your circles and trusting God, having faith in God that He is going to start doing a work in their lives. And while this begins, and the thing is, guys. We see that manifestation taking place, you're on the right road. But if that manifestation is not taking place and we still want to enter into it, it could be a problem. It could be a problem. I think it was Dr. Tony Evans. And I forget the order how this was. I think his father was saved. And he, his dad got saved. And it seemed like the more he got closer to the Lord, the less Tony's mother loved him. She it was just disdain, disdain. But then there came a period of time where they came to, and they came together. And, and understanding took place. So I'm not saying, guys, that the Holy Spirit cannot do this. But what I am saying, some of us have children, and grandchildren getting older, nieces and nephews, they may come to you and talk to you about things like this. Well, this is counsel them from the Word of God. It's not that you're better than that person that is, and it's not that you should discount your relationship with that person. But what we want to be careful of, marriage is for life. It, it is, it's not a liquidable asset. Well, it's not working, we're going to fall, we're just boom, we're done. No. It doesn't work like that. You understand what I'm saying? So going into that thing, eyes need to be wide open. There needs to be an understanding, and it is just not you and the young lady, or the young lady and the young man. It's everyone in that bloodline that <laughs> comes into the marriage. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. And that's not talked about. That's not understood. I mean, that's Uncle Joe twice removed. <laughs> you know, the one that no one invited to the family reunion, but dang, go on, how do you find out? Here he comes. <laughs> huh? Whoops. He's coming <laughs> along into the relationship, guys. <laughs> so we, we need to be guarded in that, okay? But the same thing is with business practices and partnership. Listen here. I talked this. I talked about this on on uh, Sunday. I think part of our role now as believers is when we have conversation with believers. <coughs> it, it can be dangerous ground to talk politics, but understand going into that and getting. And I don't like talking politics, but going into that conversation, the conversation can't be I and my opinion. The conversation must be. This is what the word says. Mm -hmm. Now they may not like it. They may get hot under the collar. 
You just need to know your discerner to cut that off. But our standard is what this says. Because listen, guys, I become unequally yoked the minute I stand in and vote for something that is in opposition to this. I've now come into agreement with that. And listen, I know believers who don't vote on certain line items according to this. You have now yoked yourself with the consequences of that. Can you repent? And come? Absolutely you can. Because daddy is, is more than faithful to forgive. But my point is, we really have to have the Holy Spirit's ear going forward with this thing. Okay? It, 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 it turned into, and, and I hate to say it, but our election, proper, uh, election processes are becoming a more of a popularity vote. You know what I mean? And are, they've always been a mudslinging contest. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I like this person because our mindset has to be, oh I like, like this individual because yes. they're lining up with this. Right, right. You know, when, when, when I have a candidate pool, it's the one that on all or the majority of the issues aligns here. And then there's a degree of responsibility to make sure that individual yes. follows through on what they say. Now, there's only so much we can do about that, but understand they are responsible for standing out there on that platform saying, I am going to do this, and it aligns with God's work. There's an expectation that they take that to the floor. Now, if they meet opposition, in the Senate, in the House, we have to rely on the Holy Spirit to start moving, right? Yeah. But at least they are doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah. Okay? We, we just can't cast care to the wind. And, and, I mean, I really want to get open up some of these things, but I think I'm just going to skirt the issue for now. <laughs> you know? You know, there is something in the Scripture that says, Thou shalt not murder. And there's another one that says God hates the shedding of innocent, innocent blood. blood. Well, I yeah. don't know any more innocent blood than, well. Exactly. So I'm not sure how yeah. there's an understanding of daddy's standard, yet yeah, I'm going to vote this way to cut him out. There's a consequence. Yeah. Yes. There's a consequence. And, and, and we also have to face that consequence. So that's what I'm saying, guys. When we're out and we're having conversations and stuff like that, and it, and it brings back a conversation that you and I had the last round that you had with an individual. And I don't know if you remember now what I'm talking about, but they just didn't seem to grasp God's word on a topic the way you knew that topic. And when you brought it to light, they were like kind of like backing away. Why well, don't want to change? <laughs> right. Well, listen, we have to be willing to change. Party affiliations from this point forward can mean nothing to us. It has to be Jesus in that ballot everywhere. Amen. And that's how I vote. Yeah. Okay? That's what it has to look like going forward. Okay? I don't know if you remember our conversation. I we talked about it. I don't even too particular online. So we talked about the husband and wife. We talked about our responsibility as kingdom citizens, not of this world, in this world, taking the responsibility to bring the kingdom of heaven down to earth through voting, right? Business practices, the same thing. We want to make sure our business practices are above board. We don't want to cut corners that impact our clients. They bring a reproach against the name of the business and God, right? Yeah. Same thing. Look at Joseph. I mean, when Joseph, when Joseph was sold into slavery and Potiphar bought him, after a short period of time, he had Potiphar's house on lock, baby. Yeah. He had that thing working and flowing like never before. Because God was all over it. That's what Scripture says. Yeah. 
Yeah. Joseph was blessed. Why? Because God was with him. Yeah. So everything he did was blessed and it manifested out of Christina. Devil didn't like it. Put an idea in Potiphar's wife's head. Guess what? There was a stone in that mud puddle. Made a mess. Got him kicked out. Ended up in jail. Same thing happened again. The jailer's like, man, Joseph, there's something about that cat there, man. He just knows how to get things going. Listen, I ain't even no worry about Joseph. You take care of him. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what it should look like for us as believers. As employees, volunteers. Hey, he's got it. He's going to take care of it. Why? Because, because the God that we serve. We're actually serving him when we serve our employees. Amen. Yeah. I'm talking to a, a retired crowd here. <laughs> so just pretend it's amen. Amen. <laughs> I'll get it. No, I won't. <laughs> I think someone's at the door. Hallelujah. See somebody at the no. door? The what? Nobody at the door. Okay. I heard the thing. Yes. Is it your phone, Bill? Oh. Mm -hmm. I forgot to silence it. So listen, both partners knew God before learning each other. A degree of intimacy was created by and with God for the man and the woman. So when they were brought together, there was God-created standard for unity with God at the center. How does that impact us? Well, when God is at my center, he can send me wherever I want to go. Now, listen, that's not the path of Joseph, and he ain't even in my notes, but the Holy Spirit used me. That's not the path that Joseph selected. Because he was the second youngest brother. Did I talk that right? Second youngest? Benjamin was the youngest, right? That was Joseph. Second youngest brother. Daddy loved him more than any other brothers. How do you know that? He had a coat of many colors. Yeah. Coat of many colors. He was walking around and said, hey, who's going to see us? No. <laughs> Remember Sunday? So long, farewell. I'll be the same. I ain't going until the day. I'm going to get some breaks and chill. <laughs> see you, boss. Just made a man. Man is hornets. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And if that wasn't enough, he had to throw gas on the fire. Mm -hmm. Guys, let me tell you what I dreamed. Yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine, right? Yeah. They had it, man. They were done. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to kill him. That's a no-no, right? Mm. Daddy said that's for my murder, right? Yeah. And I put him in the pit. It's my life. Traders come by, and this is where we go. But listen, when he was wearing that coat of men coming, did you actually think his plan would to be sold into slavery? <laughs> Bought by Pharaoh's captain of the guard. But Pharaoh was a wicked guy. Pharaoh was a rough guy. He, he was he was captain of Pharaoh's coast. He didn't play. You see what I'm saying? He'll cut your head off just as soon as look at you. I mean, just, no, no. No, that wasn't Joseph's plan. Going to jail was not his plan. But it was God's plan. Because all that time he was honing and making Joseph sharper. And Joseph, we see, did not, and, and I know he got weary and tired, but he did not lose his faith in God. Yeah. He Amen. maintained that yeah. because of the centeredness that he found in God, through God, and with God, it kept him balanced. No matter what came up. So, hmm, I'm where sorry? He was put. Yeah, no, regardless matter. of where he was put. Yeah. So listen, when we find ourselves in, in positions where we don't want to be, it is, it is the centeredness of God in us that will maintain us through that thing while daddy is working out what he wants worked out. When that call comes for us to come out of her, like we read over in Revelation 18 on Sunday. Listen, that's what God wants for all because he doesn't want any to perish. We've heard that word 
are acting on that word, but there are some that aren't. Those are the ones he wants to get, and he continues to provide opportunities for that through us. And there's going to come a point in time where it's like, out of time. Game over. But I got another quarter I can put in. No, 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 you don't understand. The game is over. You, you can have a pocket full of quarters. It's not going to start the game over. It's done. Okay? Now, when we look at the man and the woman, knowing God coming together separately, knowing God, and then forming that union. We can take a look at this. Um, an example of this, let's go to John chapter 10. John 10. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. That tells me that there is a degree of relationship between the good shepherd and the sheep individually, as well as corporately. Okay? It is just not facts. It is experiential. It is relationship. It's just not facts. We go to church on Sunday. We do this. We do that while we're in church. If it's a denomination, there may, it may be a, a, a liturgy that you follow to the T. From the time you walk in the door to the time you walk out. It's not just facts. It is an experience. And that experience continues when you walk out that door. Throughout the day, and it begins again the next day. You see what I'm saying? It's not just fact. Because a fact will say, I only do that on one day a week. That's like I know the formula, but I've never tried the experiment. I know a bunch of diets, but I never tried. Mm. <laughs> we'll go behind the pulpit. Check the back up. We'll get back here. Mm -hmm. see, am, I, am I making sense? Mm -hmm. It's more than the act of just going to church. It's more than the act of, and I'm ahead of myself, it's more than the act of just serving in church. I can go to church, show up, sing, do whatever. Oh, they're going to be feeding the hungry. Okay, I'm going to go and do that. I'm going to go and do this or that. But there's never any true relationship built. There may be opportunities to build fellowship with people, but where does that equate to relationship with the Lord? Because that's the reason why we should do what we do. I don't do it because it's a fact or a formula. I do it because I am in covenant relationship with God. And I understand on his hands and his feet, his eyes, his heart. That's, that's why. That intimacy is grown and it builds and it Compulsion is not really the word. But I am compelled, not like force, but bubbling over to do this because of my love walk and love relationship. Does that make sense? Yes. We pick back up here. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep, but I have other sheep that are not from this sheep pen. 
So again, it's not just us, it's worldwide. Does that make sense? He has sheep worldwide. Now, there's something about this passage of Scripture, and it's that word, no. Sometimes it's used new, and you've heard this word, and you've heard me use this word. It is the Greek word called gnosko. And gnosko is a deep knowledge. It is so deep, it is almost like sexual intimacy defined by God. Let me say that again. Sexual intimacy defined by God is the male man, one, the female man, one, coming together in covenant under God and experiencing one another. Gnosko is at that level of relationship. How do you spell that, sir? Gnosko? Yeah. I'm going to be smart. <laughs> Go ahead. I would have known. <laughs> it is G-I-N-O-S-K-O. -O. Okay. And it's Strong's Greek number 1182. This is the level of intimacy that Daddy is looking from us. To know him. Now when we talked about, and I think it was over in John 17, when Jesus is praying, he's talking about eternal life. And he defined what eternal life is. Remember he said, I don't want you to take them out of the world? Right. Eternal, he, he says, because they can experience eternal life right here, because eternal life is not leaving this place that we're not from and going back. No, in essence, it's bringing that here Eternal life is knowing who God the Father and the one he sent is. So it's not the facts about eternal life. It's about experiencing eternal life. That's the name of the game. That is the name of the game. That's how deep Gnosko is. It is a, a continuous <laughs> learning. I can tell you facts about Terry Ann. But every day I learn something different. You see what I'm saying? But that ball's in my court to learn. I can simply say, eh, we've been, we've been hanging out long enough. I, I don't need to learn no more about it. You know? I don't need to ask a question. Eh, I got it. That's just like this here. You don't understand. I grew up in church. When's the growing of the end? That was a joke. Huh? Very, very careful of saying how much word I know. Because mm -hmm. I know Daniel smack me down in a loving way. Because I don't care. I don't know that much. I don't know that much. Learning. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. There are certain facts I know about you, yeah, but, but I don't know everything about you. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's to get to know you. And, and think about how big God is in this. <laughs> we know facts about God. Yeah. He so loved the world, right? Yeah. That he said, Jesus. That's a fact, right? right? He knows everything. Right. But what does the depth of that look like? Yeah. What does the relationship behind that look like? I know the fact that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But relationally, what does that look like? Daddy, I never had to give up one of my sons for the world. What, what is that? How deep is that love? That I know that you would do it for a single individual, let alone the whole world. What is that? That's learning the depths. That is gnosko at its highest level. Because when I tap into understanding that degree of love, that degree of love goes with me everywhere I go. That degree of love sent a man, Tim Bowery, into South America. I'm talking about the, the movie that Jim Caviezel. Sorry. If you guys haven't seen that, no. oh my gosh. It, 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 is, it is some parts of troubling. I'll say. 
But that is the degree of love that's compelling him to leave his own family, his wife and children, with a high degree of possibility he ain't coming home. By the grace of God, he came home. And not only did he come home, he came home with what he went there for. You see what I'm saying? The fact was, the fact was that brother was out on the front line doing stings, locking pedophiles up. That's the fact. That was the fact. Going after little fish. The relational part of this experience came when, how many kids have you rescued? That's where the rubber met the road. And he was like, just automatically turned him. And I don't want to give it away, but because some of you haven't seen this, I don't really want to talk about it anymore, but some of the things that he sacrificed to go do this. And when you go see the film, you'll see immediately what I'm talking about. It's just, it's just utterly amazing. Father, right now, I thank you for the men and women's names that are involved, those behind the scenes that we'll never know, for his sacrifice, and, and all that they have done and will continue to do. But guys, this is this is the relationship piece that I'm talking about. There is a fact, but behind that fact, it goes much deeper into a relational experience. And, 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 and you know, sometimes we, we get with people sometimes and we really have an interest in them and it's not reciprocated. And sometimes it doesn't feel good. Okay, I mean, when I'm driving because I want to get a relational experience, but I'm not met with that, it doesn't feel good. Doors up there having to breathe. It doesn't feel good. Why? Did you just get maybe a tinge of how Jesus feels? Where yeah. he did everything he did and gets right there in front of someone and they still won't receive yeah. So now we start to begin to understand relationship at a whole different level now through that, you know, based on my own experiences when I am when I am really craving to have conversation and time spent with, but I can't get that because it's not reciprocal. I'm guilty of that with Jesus Christ. I don't always give Jesus Christ the time more than deserves. So there, there's, there's, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's, I'm, I'm not experiencing the way that I should. Okay. So, so this is, this is a work that needs to be done so that he's able to open up in me in order to draw out what he's placed in me and I'll have an understanding of how it works how it works not just by fact, but by experience. Makes sense. Federal government some time ago changed. It used to be fact, 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 fact. Bachelor's degree in this, bachelor's degree in this, bachelor's degree in this, and they were getting all these young men and women coming out 22, 24, 25 years old that had a lot of fact but no experience. So they started to change things. When they start, they started taking experience in combination with education, and depending on the degree of experience, in lieu of education, because they realize it can't be experience. That's right. Can't be experience. That didn't cost you anything because it wasn't on my paper. <laughs> I'll make a collection later. <laughs> Stop it. So Jesus says. I know my sheep and they know me. They know me. I know, say it with me. Jesus says, Jesus says I know them, I know them and, they know and they know me. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew 7. Matthew 7. I'm going to 
let's look at the 13th verse. Matthew 7, 13. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction. That narrow gate is a gate of time to spend. Cattle get accustomed to going in a certain gate. <laughs> they, they, they're, they're program, they program yourself. They're accustomed to a pattern of a shoe. You throw a, a new gate in on a cow and they'll stand there and look and just back the whole line up like, oh my God, what am I supposed to do with this? You see what I'm saying? Because it's different. Jesus is like, enter in through the narrow gate. We need to understand that sometimes that gate will shift depending on what we may be experiencing. That gate may shift, but he says it's the narrow gate that we want to go through. It's the more disciplined route that he wants us to take and not the wide and easy one. Okay? Not the path that's worn down the one that may lead you to step a little higher to get to good ground. Are you with me? For the gate is wide the road, and the road is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many ways, and there are many who go through it. Excuse me. How narrow is the gate, and difficult the road that leads to life. And few find it. Let me jump down to 23. Big jump. I'm going to come back and hit these other passages. Big jump. We just discussed that Jesus over in John 10 knows his sheep and they know him. But what happens here in Matthew 7, 23, it says, I will announce to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you lawbreakers. What happened? Let's back up here a little bit. Let's back up and read 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only the ones who do the will of my Father in heaven. Jesus just told us that not everyone's going to enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of the Father. Let's keep reading. 22. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we drive out demons in your name? Didn't we do many miracles in your name? Didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out devils in your name? Didn't we perform miracles in your name? Didn't we participate in church functions in your name? Do we go to the polls as a believer that had no relationship and didn't really know how I should be voting? Do we go to the polls as a believer and just follow all the other cows through the wide gate? Follow the polls that are skewed anyway because this is how everyone else is voting? How, how, every, how everyone else is doing everything? Are we following along because this is what the news media says we should do? Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Listen, guys, be on guard. I'm going to tell you right now. Yeah. There is another epidemic that's going to come. You already know that. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, we, we have to be, we have to understand and be prepared for that. Because we were like sheep led to slaughter last yeah. We and, and listen, we can't be like that this time. You know what I'm saying? We can't. All right? If it was a test run. There you go. I don't care what you say. It was a test run. You know? This whole thing is going to happen again. It, and I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to have the same impact. But we, as a 
citizen of heaven, kingdom of God people are going to have to say, hey, right? Because there were people all along who started saying, that's not right. On all levels, doctors, nurses, surgeons, some in government, they were snuffed out, they were quieted because mm -hmm. of how things were before. Okay? We, as a people, cannot let that happen again. We have got to discern. First and foremost, we cannot run scared. Okay? And there was a degree of fear that all of us dealt with. Born now. There was. But in this next round, I truly believe it's going to be put up or shut up. Is this where the body of Christ is going to come into her finest hour? Yeah, it, very, it, it may. Mm -hmm. I am trusting that that is surfacing now. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to see it break out on all levels. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe that there are purse holders that are being touched by the Holy Spirit right now. And they are crossroads. And they know some of the things that are going on are not right. Mm -hmm. And they're being challenged within themselves to make a choice. And that choice is going to cost them dearly. And I'm not saying going against God. I'm saying that choice is going to cost them dearly. It is going to cost them financially. Up first of all, up front, there's going to be an impact. With friends, with, with uh, a prestige, with power. But God will restore all that. I believe that. Because see the way it is. The first strings is being held now by those that have the ability to go in and skew things, change things. That the wealth of the wicked, getting ready to lay it up for the just? Yeah. Get ready. Okay. I believe that group of people, the Holy Spirit is working on right now for a time such as this. I believe that. This whole thing with the, the, the human trafficking thing is just, oh just crazy, guys. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's gaining more and more, mm -hmm. I don't want to say no to right, right news, it's, it's gaining more and more attention, and that's good, and that thing really needs a snowball. I mean, listen, you, you, it, it, it's happening here. I, I need you to understand that. Um, I was going on, mm -hmm. when I work as a researcher, I have knowledge of a case involving students. Okay? That's all I'm going to say about that. But we see human trafficking for the sex trade aspect. Don't forget about labor. Yeah, there's that too. And harvesting of human organs. Yeah. Yeah, God is exposing this stuff right and left, and he's going to deal with it mightily. I... The devil is doing his best mm -hmm. to infiltrate mm -hmm. so much and cause so much chaos. He, he has a degree of people so cattywampus mm -hmm. that they are doing all kind of experiments mm -hmm. on people, harvesting oh, organs, testing things. And, and listen, it, it's it's in order to, to grow things in labs mm -hmm. for a war. I, I, because I don't think they think they can win an all-out war. Mm -hmm. So they're going to do it biologically. Well, there you go. To a degree, yes. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, mm -hmm. remind me to tell you something after I've said um, I'm, I'm, I'm not even anywhere close. I'm just there out. 
So we need to be like you. I think you said it was Elijah the prophet. Elisha. Elisha. Yes. That when Dick was able to see in conver enemy conversations. Yes. Okay. I looked it up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. E L I S H A. Elisha, <laughs> not Elijah. Right. We need to have Holy Spirit's yes. discernment and insight on these yes. things, guys, in our times of intimacy. And don't be surprised if he opens up a window and allows you to see into things. And if he does document those things, do caution what you release. Mm -hmm. Make sure the timing is correct. Yeah, because this getting a revelation is every bit releasing the timing of revelation being released is every bit as important as getting the revelation. Does that make sense? Yes. Too soon, the enemy has something to work with and cut off. Mm -hmm. We know what happens when it's too late. The enemy is always right on time. Yeah. And believe you, believe you me, yeah. he will let you know when the time is to lose it. And listen. I, I'm not talking about a level of espionage and all that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about he may show you something that a family member is going to need going into a situation. It could be something in Holy Spirit Church. It could be something dealing with a job. Uh, it could be a job that this individual has been waiting for, kind of hoping for, and here it is, and they're getting set up. And the Holy Spirit may show you two years down the road this is what they're going to be into way over their head, and they might not be able to get out. Kind of things. You see what I'm saying? All right? Listen, it, 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 things like that are in here. Okay? They're in here. Haman's plot is a perfect example. Esther and Mordecai. Okay? Right place, right time. 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 Esther, you have got to go to the gate. Esther's like, Uncle Mordecai, if I go at the wrong time, my head's going the opposite direction. Time. Tell the people, stack all the ashes, fast, three days. Time. When the time came, led of the Holy Spirit, she entered into the great hall, and grace was extended to her. But it was time. If she had went the day before, if she would have went the day before out of excitement and anxiety, are you with me? Uh -huh. Yeah. And then even having the two banquets. There you go. There was timing. Yes. It's timing. Such a time. <laughs> it's a very unnerving time, but it's a very exciting time. Because Daddy wants us involved. <laughs> in the biggest drama. <laughs> the drama I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. He I wants us involved. But it will take intimacy. It will take intimacy. And guys, I think that intimacy is is the lesson to the boot camp. I see it in my mind's eye. Each and every one of us, Daddy knows the skill set that he's built into us, and he's going to hone that skill set in our times with him. Don't worry about what it is. And dear God, don't come ask me, because I don't know. <laughs> you come ask him, I'm like, go home, because I don't even know what mine is. <laughs> you just relax and trust God. He is not going to let anything hurt you. Yeah. Not going to let anything hurt you. Okay? I know I have one prayer request. Does anyone else need prayer? Man, I was so far off my notes tonight. It ain't even funny. I'd say it was right on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway. We need to pray Yes. Be released from Kaufman tomorrow to go home, but she's still going to have to have uh, infusions of high powered mm -hmm. uh, antibiotics mm -hmm. and uh, therapy on her knee. 
with the possibility, uh, but a high probability of immediate placement. I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to bring you up and tell the whole murder up here because I know he has a prayer request. Anyone else would be critical? Why are you looking? I'm processing uh, different okay. bits of conversation. I, I thought there was something going on that that needed to stay on you were thinking, but sometimes there are discussions that I like to have, but I don't want them necessarily super duper public. So, guys, thank you so much for tuning in with us this evening. Allow the Lord to lead you in the discussion that we had tonight on intimacy. Listen. No one has the market on God. This, this, this relationship piece is not going to require you to spend eight hours a day sitting at the Word. It's more of a mindset and an awareness of the presence. His presence is with you always. And it's a communication piece. Yes, we have to read the Word, but it's more of a knowing that he's here right now and communing with him. Take what you need from the word and build on that and meditate on that. But again, take it off the page and take it with you so you are ready and able to act in the field when he calls you, if that makes sense. So guys, have a blessed evening. We love you. See you back here Sunday morning.